Good afternoon, everybody. Um, currently, there are no people uh, joining us, but hopefully, with time, uh, other people will join. So, this class is going to be to explain the notes on continuous systems, um, continuous time systems representation in the discrete time domain. And let me share my screen now. Okay. Okay, so we know that in the continuous uh, time, we know that in the continuous time, the uh, the block diagram of a uh, continuous time controller is given by this. Uh, where this is the reference signal? This is your controller itself. Then this is the plant. Then the output y of t is fed back into the input through a comparator. Um, but now we're in the discrete time domain. So in the discrete time representation, this is the in the discrete time representation, this is uh, the block diagram we have. In this case, our controller d of z is a digital computer so uh, you have a digital uh, controller here then the plant that we are trying to control the plant is um the plant is in continuous time so there should be a way of converting from the discrete time domain which uh, the computer, which is the computer, to the continuous time domain, which is the plant we actually want to control. Then we use the digital to analog converter to do that. So the computer or the controller is in uh, discrete time. So when we pass it through a digital to analog converter, it is converted into an analog signal, which uh, can effectively be operated on by the plant. Then uh, you're already in continuous time domain A. Then in order to convert back into the discrete time, you need, in order to convert back into the discrete time, you need a uh, in, an analog to digital converter to convert um, this, uh, to convert the outputs now from the continuous time to discrete time. So this is the block diagram representation for a discrete time control system. Then in this class, what we want to do is to effectively see how digital to analog converter, how it works and how to model it, and to see how the analog to digital converter uh, how it works and how to model it. Then let's um, let's uh, consider this analog to digital con uh, converter. So the analog to give uh, this is a continuous time signal, and in control systems, we model analog to digital conversion through two steps, sampling and quantization. In sampling, sampling involves breaking down the continuous time system. This is a continuous time system. So you're effectively breaking it down into different sample instances. And this is what we get when we sample the signal. So you are sampling the signal at specific uh, sampling intervals intervals given by t. So we sample it at specific uh, time intervals. And after sampling it, 
you quantize. So what's quantization? Quantization simply means that um, getting the corresponding digital value that represents the analog signal. For instance, uh, at this point, you can we represent it by one, uh, since it's between days, because for, you know, we're trying to convert from analog to digital. So digital values can only have integer values. So we represent this by one, we represent this by two, we represent this by three, and we represent this by six. So you move on and on like that. So in control systems, we model analog to digital uh, converters through sampling or a sampling circuit and quantization. So how do we model digital to analog converters? We model digital to analog uh, convert conversion using the zero order, using holding circuits. So we can have the first order old or the zero order old. So this signal is in, um, is in discrete time. So we want to convert it into analog, into continuous time. So what we simply do here yeah, is to, uh, for zero order old, zero order old will um, hold the signal for the specific sampling time. So uh, yeah, the signal is in, uh, is, it, is in discrete time. So in order to convert it into the analog form using zero order old, you hold it uh, up to this point, you hold it up to this point, you hold it, you hold it, you hold it, then you uh, hold it, then you hold it up to this point. So effectively, this is how you convert from um, digital to analog. So using the uh, this representation, where you have the DA and the AD converter, so this is effectively how the computer does the analog to digital conversion and the, uh, the digital to analog conversion. So we have um, for DA conversion, we have zero other old. The zero other old is the most common or the most popular you will see in control systems, uh, in control systems as well. And we also have the first order old, we have the second order old. Uh, the second order old, the way it approximates a digital signal is just with a straight line connecting the um, two consecutive sampling instances. So um, uh, it's just a straight line. So this uh, first order old conversion from digital to discrete time, it's a it's a very common question. So you need to understand how the zero order would uh, how to convert from a discrete time uh, to continuous time using the zero order would. So you just maintain the value for the throughout the duration of the sampling period. The value is maintained. Then when you get to the next sampling. Uh, time, you just increase it to the point where you have it. And so now we've talked about, um, we've talked about DA and AD. So now um, in, in control systems, in digital control systems, we model the analog, um, the digital to analog a converter, we model it using a zero other old circuit. So this block diagram I have here, this block diagram I have here is the same block diagram. It's the same block diagram I have here. So in place of this, we model a DA a converter, a digital to analog converter with a zero order old. So I replace this with a zero order old. Then we model AD converter with a sampling circuit. 
So I replaced this one with the symbol for sampling. So in effect, that particular block diagram is replaced uh, using this diagram. So instead of the uh, the D A you have A, replace it to the zero order odd, and in place of the A D, we replace it with a sampler. So this is the symbol for um, sampling or a sampling circuit. So in this in this domain here, in this domain A, you are in continuous time, and in this domain you are in discrete time. So you use the zero order or to convert into continuous time or into analog. Then you use the sampling circuit to convert back into discrete time. So this is the um, block diagram representation of a, a digital control system. And now I've explained sampling and I've explained zero order or now I want to give the mathematical representation of both a sampler and a zero order old. I want to describe it in terms of the uh, in terms of mathematics. So this is a symbol of a sampler or a sampling circuit. So you are in continuous time. So when you sample, you effectively convert it into the discrete into the discrete time. So you effectively convert it into the discrete time. So thank you all for joining. Uh, I can see some people are joining already. So I already started the class. I already started the class already. So uh, thank you, those people that are uh, joining already. So uh, let me continue. So, uh, so you will have the recording of the of the video of this lecture at the end of the video. So those people that are participating are joining already. If you have, um, if you have questions, just type it in the chat. Then I would I will try to answer it as I do the lecture. So I'll continue with the lecture. So just to. Uh, bring into account uh, the people that are just joined. Uh, let me just try to summarize. So this class is on uh, continuous time uh, signals representation in the discrete time domain, and you already you already know the the uh, the block diagram of a control system when you are in the continuous time domain. But in the discrete time domain, the difference is that here, yeah, this is our controller. Our controller in the continuous time domain, we're just using a continuous time controller. We're using a continuous time controller here. Um, that's in analog classical control. But now we are in digital, we are doing digital control. Our controller, which is a computer, is a is a digital computer that's why we call it a computer we call it a digital computer because it's um it works basically in the discrete time domain It's a digital computer so our controller is not analog so the reason why we are doing digital control is that we want to use our com our computer to actually control the plant want to use a, a digital device to control the plant. So there should be a means of converting from the digital domain into the analog domain. And I said that we model DA, we model it with a zero order old, and the AD, we model it with a sampling circuit. So that's what I explained previously. And I said the analog to digital conversion, it works in two steps. The first is, it first of all samples the signal, then you quantize. Sampling simply means you are breaking down the signal. So this is the continuous time signal, which you want to convert to discrete time to digital. So sampling means that you are breaking down the signal 
into specific into specific sampling intervals, which is given by this. Then quantization simply means that you are trying to estimate the value of the output of that signal at a particular point. So you are trying to estimate, like at this point, the value of the continuous time signal is one because it's between one and two. So we're going to use, we just simply use the uh, lowest value or since it's just in the middle, um, we can just use one or two, but we cannot say it's 1.5 because we are in the, uh, we're now in the digital domain. Then uh, you continue like that with the other uh, sampling instance. Then the digital to analog converter, I said that we model it as a zero order old or first order old, uh, second order old. But most control systems, um, most control systems make use of, most control systems make use of zero order old to model digital to analog conversion. So for zero other old, you just hold it at the first value, then you step it up to the next value. Then for first other old, you use a straight line approximation to model it. Then now I went into the uh, sampling. So now I want to represent the sampling and also the sampling circuits and also the zero order old. I want to represent it mathematically because in this course we are doing, we do a lot, we do lots of mathematics. And this is a symbol for the sampler. So when you are sampling, what you are effectively doing is that, now I'm trying to represent sampling using mathematics. So what you are doing is that you are modulating the continuous time signal X of 80 with a train of impulses, delta T. That's what you are basically doing. So let's look at the diagram. So this is the continuous signal. So you want to sample it, you want to convert it into discrete time. We are simply modulating this continuous time signal, X of 80, with a train of impulse sequences. So this is a train of uh, impulse sequences. Then, this train of impulse sequences is represented by this. So it's a summation of delayed uh, impulses from zero to infinity. So that's how it represents delta T. Then the modulation, given this diagram, uh, given this diagram, the output is X of 80 uh, multiplied by delta T. So the discretized signal becomes this. And so this is where we got the equation from. And since delta T, which is the train of impulses, is given by this, we simply replace that equation up with this. Then when we take the Laplace transform of both sides, so this becomes X of X, then the Laplace transform, when you're taking the Laplace transform, you are simply integrating. So since this is from zero to infinity, so you are integrating from zero to infinity, then you are multiplying it with the exponential of minus st. So that's what, that's what we do in Laplace transform. So we are arranging the integration and the, the integral with the summation. So this is simply this, but when you rearrange this, you have this, then when you get the integral of a delta, the integral of the impulse function is a unit step at t is equal to kt. So this becomes one, a unit step is one. So this becomes one, then all your t terms becomes kt. So you have this. Then uh, the Laplace transform, we already proved it as this. Then when we say that let z be equal to st, you would see that the Laplace transform 
becomes the Z transform. The, uh, in, in place of uh, exponential st, you replace it with Z. You would see that the Laplace transform becomes the Z transform. So it shows that you can effectively discretize a continuous time signal, X of S, by replacing it with Z is equal to ST, then you get a discrete signal, which is in the um, Z domain. So we've represented this sampling circuit. We represented it mathematically. Now we want to represent the zero of as a mathematical function. So these days, if you have a digital, if you have a digital system or a discrete time signal, just by just by one impulse function, what the zero order old circuit does is that it's going to maintain the value of the of that impulse function for the for a specific time instant t. So when you pass it through a zero order old, this is what it does. It just maintains the the uh, digital signal throughout the sampling interval. In effect, converting the digital system. Um, converting the digital system or the digital signal into continuous time signal. So the zero, uh, the zero of that old uh, function is just one. So here is just one. It just maintains it throughout the sampling interval as one. So when we uh, Laplace transform the zero of that old function. So this is the Laplace transform. It's simply multiplying the function with exponential minus st. Then when you do the integration, uh, you're going to get this. So in effect, and this, the, this function, g h of o, is the zero order old. So h o is the old uh, function or transfer function. So represent the zero order old transfer function by one minus exponential minus st divided by s. So in in place of in place of this zero order old, in place of instead of writing zero order old, uh, in most textbooks and even in this class, we'll be replacing this zero order old with one minus exponential minus t s divided by s. So you should note that when you see, um, when you see this particular, um, this particular equation, it simply, is simply a zero of that old. So it's simply a zero of that old. So we can just either use this representation or we, we use the equation um, format. Now, we want to, uh, when you, to get the Z transform, so uh, the Z transform of the zero or that old, when you do the maths, it's given by uh, one. So now, we want to combine the sampling circuits with the old circuit, because I told you previously, you have a continuous time signal when you pass it through a sampler, so this is the symbol for a sampler, you're going to get this, its representation in this straight time. So you are discretizing the signal by passing it through a sampling circuit. Then when you pass that a discrete time signal through a zero order old, you are effectively converting it into, uh, into a continuous, you are effectively converting it into a continuous time signal. So in a way, combining a sample, a sample circuit and an old circuit, when you start in the continuous time domain, you are also get, going to get uh, back into the continuous time domain. So this was the X of S we arrived at when we were proving it the last time. So when you convert, when you, uh, y of 
y of s is simply the zero order mode multiplied by this um, by this function here. So this is the zero order mode multiplied by this function here. And the zero order mode can effectively, you know, I told you that instead of this, uh, we represent this equation with zero order mode. And in a way, one question can be, why do you need to pass, you know, you're starting with a continuous system, a continuous time system, and you're ending with a continuous time uh, system. So why do you need to pass it through, in, through a sample and a sample and old? The reason why we need to pass it, why we are doing this is because, remember, we are trying to represent a continuous time signal in the digital domain. And in the digital, in the digital to domain, we have a digital to analog converter, which is represented by zero order old, which we modeled as a zero order old. Then we also have the analog to digital converter, which we modeled as a sampler or as a sampling circuit. So in effective, effectively, uh, when we pass the signal through a sample and old circuit, what we are doing is that the, what we got is the continuous time signal we get at the end of the day is actually the way the computer will see it. Because, you know, in a computer, we have uh, digital to analog converters and we have analog to digital converters. So this is the real world. The real world is continuous. But when you pass it through this sample and old circuit, what you get at the end of the day is actually the way the computer will, will see it. I'm going to show you an instance now. So this is a continuous time signal. And you know the real world is in continuous time. So you pass it through a, a, a sample circuit. In effect, you are digitizing the signal. So at specific sampling intervals. And now you pass it through a zero order old in order to convert it back into continuous time. And this is um, this is the output which you which is obtained. So this was where we started from, is in continuous time. This was where we ended up with. It's also in continuous time. So this particular representation where my cursor is, is how is how the is, this is the real world, but this is effectively the way the computer sees it, the way the digital computer sees it. And since we are controlling the system using computers, using digital computers, so this is effectively, though this was our original signal, but this is how the computer will see it in order to actually um, control the system because we are using the computers now for control. So the computer doesn't see the signal as this, as this continuous time representation. This is the way the computer sees it. So remember the title of this course is um, Continuous Time uh, System Signal Modeling in the dig in Discrete Time Domain. So we need to pass this, our signal through a sample and old circuit because we want to really know, we want to really be sure of how a computer sees, uh, sees the signal in a continuous time domain. So this is the way the computer sees it. The computer doesn't see it this way, even though this is our original signal. And therefore, Continuous time control systems can be represented in the discrete time domain as this. So now, uh, this is a sample circuit and this is the old circuit. So I told you that this is the representation. You can also model it. We prove this or we can just write zero or that old. Then in effect, you are in continuous time here. You are in continuous time here. Your plant is in continuous time. So in order to really see the signal or really see the system, the way the computer sees it, we need to pass it through a sample. And you need to pass it through an old. Uh, because at this point is discretized, and at this point, you've converted it back into a continuous time signal. So this um, passing, through, passing your system through uh, a sample and old circuit 
is a way of modeling a continuous time signal as the, um, in a way that the digital computer, which we are using to control the system, would see it. That's what we are doing. So, as for so this particular block diagram can be, can be simplified into this. So, you are simply multiplying your zero order odd with your continuous time transfer function. Um, so this, the simplified form is this. So henceforth, when we are giving a transfer function in the continuous time domain, we, are, we have to, what we are going to do now henceforth is to multiply it with this. And we are actually multiplying it with this, uh, with this particular function because we want to really see it the way the computer is seeing the signal because we are using computers to control it. So we want to be able to represent the signal exactly the way the computer is going to see the signal. So this is the original signal, but this is the way the computer sees it. Because in, the compu in computers, you have A to D and D to A converters. So henceforth, that's how we are going to be um, representing a continuous time control system. Then the transfer function, the new transfer function, I will not waste much time uh, proving it. So, because for in your, in your continuous time control class, you already, uh, you already know how to get the transfer function. Uh, let me just rush over here. So Y of S is E of S multiplied by G of S. Then the error is the u of s minus the output the y of s, which is this. And we replace the error here with u minus y. You get this. Then after doing some rearrangements and collecting like terms, you get the transfer function as this. Then when you do the z transform of this, um, you effectively get this. So this is the Z transfer function. And since our G of Z now is, I told you that from now on, we are going to multiply the new, um, the new transfer function is going to be the zero order odd um, in conjunction with the original transfer function you have in the continuous time domain to really see it the way the computer is seeing it or the way the digital computer is seeing it. So in effect, this G of Z is going to be placed with the uh, zero order hold, with the zero order hold included, where this is equal to the Z transform of this year. Then this method of including the zero order hold in order to get uh, the modified transfer function. So now we are including the zero order hold because we want to represent it. We want to be represented exactly the way the computer will see it. Though the computer works at sampling instance, that's why you have a clock and is not like the is not the original control system in the continuous time domain because of the discretization, but we are using a computer to control it, then we need to be able to see it the way the computer will see it. So we henceforth, we are going to be multiplying the zero order old transfer function with our new transfer function here. And this method is called the step invariant discretization. The method we used previously or in the last lecture is the impulse invariant discretization. In the impulse invariant discretization, you are not including the zero order out. You're not including this. So in order to discretize the system, you are just, it's just this you are considering. But that's the ideal case, but it's not the ideal case in a way because we're using computers now and viewing it the way the computer will see it, we have to include the zero order out. So the step invariant discretization method involves including the zero order old um, the zero order old 
transfer function into the zero order old transfer function uh, into the and integrating it to get the new transfer function then uh, effectively when you do the z transform and you expand this out you get this then when you expand it out further we get this and the the z transform of this so using the tables the z transform of this is z minus one so collecting uh like terms you get this then um doing some other rearrangements multiplying both sides um by z and actually implementing this you're going to get this so in the z domain this is what you are working with but in the s domain this is what you're working with so now i note that this is not equal to this so in the next class we are going to be proving and this but one quick proof is that this g h o z remember we got it here uh we got it here as one we got it as one so if you were to do if you are to say that okay this is equal to this it means that this this when you multiply it by this is equal to g of z which is not the case so now we're going to do an example so to really we we'll use a a concrete example in order to verify what i'm, I'm trying to say so this example it says that a sample data server system is shown in the figure and given that the sampling time is one second and the input is a step unit function determine the z transform of the output so the z transform of the output is y of z effectively you are, you are meant to determine y of z then the output response of the system the output response of the system is simply y k or y of kt anyone says can either be y of k or y of kt so in effect when you get y of z you'd inverse z transform this to get this then the final value of y of kt uh, so that's what we're going to be doing so in this question our g of s is given by this so this is our zero order old and this is the like we are trying to do continuous time signal modeling continuous time signal modeling of um in the in the discrete time domain that's what we're trying to do so now the first step is to multiply the zero order old or to include the effect of the zero order old uh, with the plant so we simply multiply this by this then we get so that's what we are doing so we are multiplying the zero order old with g of s and we got this then we need to get the um we need to get the z transform of this so we already proved that we already proved this that this is how to get the z transform when you are including the zero order old so this is our g of s divided by s then this is our g of s divided by s then the new transfer function including the zero order old is given by this now we want to and um, the next step we're going to do now is to break this down into partial fraction so why want to break this down into partial fraction this one we want to break it down into into partial fraction because we want to get the we want to get the z transform is in continuous time so we want to represent this in the z 
uh, in the Z domain. Then after that, we multiply it with this. So in order to represent this in the Z domain, remember what we did in the last class. So what we did in the last class is that we are going to break, uh, the first step is to um, break it down into partial fraction. Then after that, you are going to um, get the Z transform from the Z tables. So when you break this down into partial fractions, you get this. And uh, we now convert this into the Z domain using the Z tables. So we want to convert this into, uh, we want to convert, we want to find the Z transform. So the Z transform of one over S squared. So this is a ramp is given by this. We actually proved this in the first class. The Z transform of this is given by this. So you simply use the Z tables. Then this is a this is a step. Um, this is a step function, and the Z transform of this is given by this. So let me um, let me go to the to the Z tables so that you can see. So the Z transform of this is this which we got and the z transform of this we had a representation in this format we got this then the ramp of this we got this so it's from the z tables um i got that from so let me go back to my to the lecture. So effectively, it's from the tables I got this. Okay, somebody asks, how do you arrive at minus two divided by s? Okay. Um, the way we arrived at this so this is like this is the same thing as this so we are breaking this signal down into partial fraction um so I, I didn't go into the details of how to break it down into partial fraction so there are rules of breaking it down into partial fractions so uh you will you, to break it down a divided by s squared plus b divided by s plus 0 0.5 then plus c divided by s so that's the um that's the rule for breaking when you have this denominator for breaking it down into partial fraction so you need to get a b and c but i skipped i skipped the step of breaking it down so maybe after the class you uh you 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 do it yourself to convince yourself that this is actually equal to this when you break it down into partial fractions. I hope I've answered your question. So, um, so the from the Z tables we got this. Okay, thank you. He said, okay, thank you. So from the Z tables we got this. Then. So this is effectively what we got. Then we do some algebra. So you collect the denominator uh, with the numerator. And this is just pure math. So I would advise you to go through the steps uh, after the class to convince yourself that well, um, is actually the right thing. Then when you expand, you simplify and um, this is going to end up as this. And remember we want to get G H O G of Z. And the G H O G of Z from here is, is Z minus one divided by Z multiplied by this. So in effect, we've been able to get the Z transform of this 
which we already got, then we just multiply by this. So when we multiply it by z minus 1 divided by z, you are going to get this equation here. So this is your final answer. So the first question says that you should get the, the z transform of the heart goods. So this is just the, um, the transfer function. So we've not gotten the output yet. And this is the formula to get the output. So we, we already got this. So now we need to get this. So this is the same thing as this. So you can just do the, the maths or the algebra. Then you multiply by u of z. In the question, it says that our u of z yes. is, is a step from our question, our u of z, the input is a unit step. And a unit step in the z domain, unit step in the z domain is represented by this. So if you look at the z tables, a unit step is this. So when you multiply it as you're going to get this. So we've gotten out the first question, which is to get the z transform of the hard code. The next question is to get the output response. And the output response, like I said, is just simply y of k or y of kt. So in effect, what we are supposed to do is to find the uh, inverse z transform. So in the first class, then if you also did the assignment, you actually found the inverse z transform because now we are in the z domain but now we want to get uh in, into the continuous into the discrete time domain so remember in the first class I, I told you that there are three methods uh the first method i said was the partial fraction expansion then the second method was the inverse formula inverse z transform formula and the third method was the long division method and in that particular class, I told you that you have to you have to know the three methods. And so at this point, I will tell you why you have to know the three methods. So look at this, look at this trans, uh, look at the output. You for you to use the partial fraction expansion, you have to be able to factorize this this denominator that is highlighted into because the other is three so it's bz minus a z minus b z minus uh, c but when you do that you're going to get a you're going to get a complex number and it's not possible uh, when you go through that route you get a complex number and there is no like direct method when you get a complex number to find the inverse transform so you cannot use the partial fraction expansion and you cannot even use the inverse Z formula because the inverse Z formula also requires that you, you factorize this, you break this down into um, Z minus A, Z minus B, Z minus C. But this, when you break it down, you'll be getting a complex number and which is not, and you'll not be able to get this Z the inverse transform easily. So the only method we are left with is the long division. If it was possible to use the, um, the partial fraction expansion, we could have used it because it's much more simpler. Even the inverse Z transform formula is much easier. But since we can't use the two methods, you have to use the long division. So we're going to divide this by this and you'll use the long division method um so i already did it so using the long division method we are going to arrive at this answer so it's, it's an infinite series so you continue but i stopped at uh at five so when you convert it back into the time domain you are going to get this so effectively at k is equal to zero you have zero then this is at k is equal to one. And this is at k is equal to two. So this is your coefficient. At k is equal to three, at k is equal to four, k 
k is equal to 5. So effectively, we've been able to get the, um, the inverse z transform. Then the, the last question is to get the final value of y of kt. So that's the last question, to get the final value of y of kt. Uh, I'll be stopping here because of the, I have less than one minute. So I would stop here. Then you should join the second Zoom meeting. You should join the second Zoom meeting on Moodle. Uh, the one that said the second Zoom meeting so that we can, uh, so that we can continue with the lecture. So I would stop the recording now.